Good morning, Dan and Amy and uh, the uh, D.C. press corps not affording itself particularly well yesterday. The combination of representatives from ABC and NBC News focused on uh, language. Yeah. Richard Engel, your hero, Uh Amy. Oh, no. It's easy to scapegoat people, and that is what has always happened when there have been pandemics or epidemics uh, that foreigners are are attacked foreigners sometimes physically attacked uh, if you look at what happened uh, during the, the middle ages there was lots and lots of scapegoating uh, against an ethnic group or a religious group uh, whenever there were pandemics that affected the society and frightened a lot of people and uh, china certainly feels that is what happened what is happening now uh, with people calling it the the wuhan flu or the wuhan virus or the the china virus this is a virus that came from the territory of China, but came from bats. This is a bat virus, not a, uh, a China virus. Uh, it doesn't speak Chinese. It doesn't target Chinese people. Uh, it targets human beings who happen to touch their eyes, nose, or or mouth. That is amazing. But the Chinese people eat the bats. Uh, but, but no one has confirmed that it's uh, came from a bat, number one. So Richard Engel is just saying things he thinks are true without any evidence to support well, them. Well, he did go to the virologist. He had one Shanghai. virologist say she thinks 90 percent likely, and a lot of other people reject that. Well, just like there was a theory about a pangolin that was rejected. And so that's that's one thing that he did that is irresponsible as a quote-unquote journalist, which he is not. He's just a partisan like most of the rest of the D.C. press corps. Number two— Viruses don't speak Chinese. Are you kidding me? The intellectual level of these people? That's bad. And then there's uh, Cecilia Vega. ABC. ABC News. So talking, you know, Trump is racist. There are reports of dozens of incidents of bias against Chinese Americans in this country. Your own aide, Secretary Azar, says he does not use this term. He says ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? Because it comes from China. That's good reason. It's not racist at all. No, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. Yeah. I, I don't think it's racist to call it the Chinese virus or the China virus or the Wuhan virus. Well, you know, I can I was alive two weeks ago, way yeah. back two weeks ago. So I was alive to remember this sort of reporting from the outlets that employ those two knuckleheads you heard from, as well as CNN and MSNBC. This is all happening at a time that we're starting to see a message shift here because you're starting to hear the Republicans, especially Trump Co., calling it the Wuhan or the Chinese coronavirus. They're looking for someone to blame. Concern is growing this morning over an outbreak of a new SARS-like virus in China. At least six people have died from the Wuhan coronavirus. Allison the Camerata. Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The 34-year-old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan virus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. What more can you tell us about the similarities or differences between SARS and the Wuhan coronavirus? The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus in China. The Wuhan uh, yeah. coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. You get the picture. Uh, it's uh, perfectly clear, just as uh, their uh, pronouncements and everything else. Trump is a uh, a uh, politician in pursuit of being a dictator. And now Trump should be king, should act like a king. He He wanted to be a king. That was untrue. Now they say he should act like a king, and that's not true either. Consistently wrong. By the way, uh, just uh, on the origins of the virus... Uh, findings published in Nature Medicine by comparing the uh, available genome sequence data, known uh, data for known coronavirus strains, we can firmly determine that SARS-CoV-2 originated through natural processes, said Christian Anderson, an associate professor of immunology and microbiology at Scripps Research and author of the paper. Uh, that uh, is one of those experts who disputes the bat theory that you and Richard Engel are clinging to. Uh, The lies, the lies, the lies. A good piece by Mark Hemingway in the Washington, I mean, excuse me, in the uh, New York Post about uh, people like Dana Milbank at the Washington Post. Fake news, or it's a, a, Trump said it's a, a, a hoax, never said the virus was a hoax. That's a lie, he knows it. Dr. Anthony Fauci was muzzled. Not true, Dr. Anthony Fauci had to tell the press it wasn't true. By the way, with respect to the press corps, since they're so sensitive about names, I just wonder, um, 
did they consider the feelings of Russian Americans for two years when they talked about Russian collusion? Oh, wasn't wasn't right. that wasn't that insensitive to term it Russian collusion? For more on the topic of uh, globalism, because we're talking about uh, wannabe globalists, although probably without the intellectual heft, most of them to qualify. We're pleased to be joined by Jason Morgan, associate professor in the Faculty of Foreign Studies at Rei Taku University in Japan. I hope I pronounced that right. Jason, thanks for joining us. Appreciate That's it. That's right. Thanks uh, for having me. Thank you. Um, tell us about uh, what it's like to be homo globalist, as uh, you term it. <laughs> well, I, I'm thrilled that somebody read the piece. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, in my mind, homo globalist is a person without patriotism, without without any obligations to home or country, someone who just roams the world making money and selling out disadvantaged people. And when this whole Wuhan virus, I think it's important to call it the Wuhan virus, and I'll talk about that in a second. But when the when the Wuhan virus outbreak started, I was struck by the fact that, you know, a conversation that had been in the news for a couple of years about outsourcing medicines to China suddenly seemed to to strike people as, as being having great currency. But this has been a problem for for years. And we basically sold out our ability to protect ourselves to a foreign country, a hostile foreign country. And in my mind, this is homo globulus. He's uh, the man without a country who just makes money selling out other people's. Yeah, you. Um, uh, I, I let you, what's it like to be a globalist? Is the question that you you ask, and you go through it, and uh, then you you point out a couple of things I'd like you to get to, since we were just discussing it. Uh, sure. First, Homo globalist does not like language very much, at least not words <laughs> with right. not words with meanings. That's right. That's the whole thing to avoid is that that words would have meanings. Uh, it's it's nominalism all over again. Now, there was a great piece in the, um, the Tokyo newspaper, Sankei Shimbun, this morning by Abiru Rui, who's one of the great conservative voices of Japan. And he said, the reason we call it the Wuhan virus is not because it came from Wuhan, but because the, the authorities and the Chinese government covered this thing up for two months. And that's why people are dying around the world today. It's not because it came from China. It's because the Chinese authorities, to save their own positions, let people die. That's why you call it the Wuhan virus, to remind people that this is a Chinese man-made Chernobyl-type problem. This is not a, this is not a, uh, a natural problem. Uh, the second thing about homo globalis, that um, time, uh, he or she exists outside of time. <laughs> right. Well, I just heard the, the segment that you had on before you patched in to me. Uh, you know, just two weeks ago, everybody in the world was calling this the Wuhan virus, and suddenly it's racist to say that it's the Wuhan virus. It's, there's a time warp that I just can't get on board. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, things change so quick. One day it's all right to say something, and the next day it's you're a bigot for saying the thing that was said yesterday. It's, uh, it's a strange passage of time for the globalist. Yeah. What What is life like there for you in Japan? Well, we're kind of hunkering down. It's... um. I haven't been to Tokyo for a couple of weeks now, but um, some folks I know who commute every day in Tokyo say that there's there's been a time stagger for the morning commute. So traffic is probably down about 20 percent from rush hour. But um, the Chinese tourists, I mean, obviously there's no Chinese tourists here and the South Korean tourism has also basically stopped. Mm -hmm. So Kyoto is having a hard time. Tourist places like Kyoto, uh, the Shinkansen, the bullet train traffic is down by about 50 percent. Uh, schools are basically shut down. It was voluntary, but I think about 80% of the schools are now on an extended winter break. So uh, it's kind of business as usual, but just a little bit slower than, and, than and, before. But is it a mandatory lockdown or shelter in place? No, it's not. It's not. The, the schools, in fact, there was a lot of um, fake news about this as well in the U.S., the American press. But it was not an order from the government. It was just a set of guidelines, oh. and it was, it was voluntary. So it's not like, you know, the prime minister is portrayed as some sort of dictator saying lock it all down, but it's just it was a recommendation. But but would it be fair to say that uh, Japanese culture is uh, tends to be one that is more obedient to authority than, say, American culture? Well, I think, you know, this this whole uh, coronavirus thing coincided with the ninth anniversary of uh, the Fukushima disaster of nine years ago. And so I think the folks here 
uh, more than being obedient, I think that folks are pretty calm. You know, they, they keep a cool head and uh, there's not much panicking that goes on when a disaster strikes. Just kind of just kind of buck up and do what you have to do. Um, there's uh, I, I the Souther show that I do uh, last yeah, last night. I interviewed uh, Melissa Chen, who is a, a Chinese American living in New York. She uh, writes for Spectator USA, and uh, she talked about how uh, she wrote about how pandemics changed the way we think. And she mm-hmm. talked she talked about uh, and it was very interesting with respect to all these uh, you know uh, nouveau cries of racism from the press corps. Uh, she talked about our behavioral immune system that guides our our instinct for dis, uh, disease avoidance behaviors. It's uh, it's uh, mm. it's it's subconscious. And one of the things she recounts is like, oh, you know, uh, as Cecilia Vega was saying, you know, people are, are uh, saying don't go to Chinatown. And this has been for weeks and weeks and weeks. And what she's saying is that's not racist. In fact, um, my dad wouldn't go to Chinatown either when this uh, outbreak started, not because he doesn't like Chinese restaurants or he doesn't like the proprietors in Chinatown. It's because he recognized, you know, I know a lot of the proprietors. I know they have family that go back and forth to China. I know they go back and forth to China. So I'm worried about their social network in terms of the the spread of the disease. It's not because I don't like Chinese people like me. And that's what a lot of people did, too. So it's it's sort of a, a subconscious behavioral immune response. It's not has nothing to do with the race of a particular people. Yeah, the left wing in the United States, they just got to get over the race thing. I mean, the, the reason they had to lock down Wuhan was because the people who live in Wuhan were trying to get out of Wuhan. I mean, it's Chinese people trying to leave a city in China because there's a virus breaking out. It has nothing to do with race. You know, when there's a crisis, people don't think about skin color. They think of protecting themselves and their families. And that's I mean, there's nothing to do with ethnicity. He is Jason Morgan. He's given us a lot to think about with respect to homo globalists, which I'm going to start using. Very good. Uh, <laughs> Thank asso- you. Associate professor of the Faculty of Foreign Studies at Reitaku University in Japan. Jason, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. And, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. You're listening to Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM 560. The Answer. The Lou Dobbs Financial Report is brought to you by Signature Bank helping local businesses succeed. Visit SignatureBank.Bank for your commercial banking needs. I'm Lou Dobbs. The U.S. border with Canada is closed. Mexico. 